Hello learners, greetings of the day. I am Professor Karampal Narwal from Haryana School of Business, Guru Jambeshwar University of Science and Technology, Hisar, Haryana. Today we shall take up the UNESCO Competency ICT Framework. The changes in pedagogical process may involve the use of various ICT tools and digital contents as a part of entire classroom group and individual learning activities. Changes in teacher practice involve knowing where and when to use technology for classroom activities and presentation for management, ask and for the acquisition of additional subject matter and pedagogical knowledge in support of teacher. The own professional learning, the little change in social structure of class occurs in this approach. Other than the perhaps placement and integration of technology resources in classroom or in a lab to ensure the equitable access, the technology may involve, may include the computers along with the productivity software, it may drill and practice tutorial and web contents and use of networks for management purposes. In the early stage of development, the teacher competencies related to technology literacy approach includes the basic digital literacy skill, the digital citizenship, along with the ability to select and use appropriate off-the-hand educational tutorials, games, drill and practice software, web content in computer laboratories or with a limited classroom facility to complement standard curriculum objectives assessment approaches, unit plans, and dedicated teaching methods. Teachers need to learn this process so as to be able to use the ICT in a classroom data need and to support their own professional learning process as well. The knowledge deepening, the aim of knowledge deepening approach is to increase the ability of students, citizen, and workforce to add value to society and to the economy by applying the knowledge gained in school or colleges. Subject to solve the complex high priority problems encountered in real world situation of work, society in life generally. Such problems might relate to the environment, food security, health and conflict resolution. With this approach, teachers should understand policy goals and societal priorities and be able to identify, design and use specific classroom activities that address these goals and priorities. This approach often requires changes in curriculum that emphasize depth of understanding or coverage of contents and assessment that emphasize the application of real world problem. Assessment focuses on the complex problem solving and incorporating assessment into learning activities. The pedagogy associated with this approach may include collaborative problem solving process, the project based learning process in which students explore a subject deeply and bring their knowledge to effectively handle the day-to-day -day question, issues and solving the process. In the fact, the teachers need to be student-centric and the teacher's role to structure tasks, guide the students, understanding to support the student as they tackle the collaborative projects. The teachers help the students to create implement and monitor projects plan and their solution as well. The lessons and the classroom structure need to be more dynamic with the students working in the small groups as well. In guiding the students understanding of key concept, the teachers may employ open-ended ICT tools that are specific to require their subject area such as visualization in science data analysis tool in mathematics and role play simulation in social sciences. The teacher's competencies related to the knowledge deepening approach include the ability to manage information, 
structure problem task and integrate the open-ended software tool and subject-specific application with the student-centric teaching methods and collaborative project in support of the students. In-depth understanding of the key concept of their application to real-world problem, the teacher should be able to use ICT to create and monitor individual and group student project as well. To assess the information and expert the collaborative with other such teacher as well. The knowledge creation, the aim of knowledge creation approach is to increase productivity by creating students, citizen and a workforce of respective country that constantly engaged in knowledge creation, innovation and lifelong learning process. Teacher in this approach should not be able to design classroom activity that advance these policy goals but also participate in the development of programs within their school and colleges that advance these goals. With this approach, the curriculum goes beyond a focus on knowledge of school subject to the explicitly include the knowledge society skills that are needed to create a knowledge. Such skills include the skill of problem solving, communication, collaboration, experimentation, critical thinking, and creative expression. These skills become curricular goal themselves and the object of new assessment methods. Perhaps the most significant aim is for students to be able to create their own learning goals and plan to establish what they had already know, assess the strength and weaknesses in order to design a learning plan, stay on the task, track their own progress and build on the successful and urgent failure. This skill can be used throughout a lifetime to practice and learning society. The role of teachers is to openly ap appreciate these architectural processes, structure and situation in which students these skills and assist the student in their skill acquisition process. The teachers in fact attempt to build a learning society in a classroom in which students are continuously engaged in developing their own skills, also learning from each other skills. Indeed, school or colleges transform into learning organization in which all its participating members are involved in the learning process. Teachers may also be seen as a model learner and a knowledge producer who are persistently engaged in educational experimentations and innovation in collaboration with their colleagues, students and outside experts to produce new knowledge about learning and teaching practices. A variety of network devices, digital resources, e electronics environments are used to create and support this community in its production of knowledge anytime, anywhere collaborative learning process. Therefore, the importance of this module may be outlined as per the requirements of learners as ICT framework is intended to inform the educational policy makers, the teacher educator, the providers of professional learning and working teachers on the increasing role of ICT in educational reform process. There are six different aspects of ICT framework. The first one is understanding ICT in education policy. This aspect encourages teachers to be aware of how ICT might assign to national educational priorities as expressed within the policy environment. Teachers are encouraged to understand their significant role in preparing the next generation to be effective and productive learners of society. At the knowledge acquisition level, the teachers are made aware of ICT in education policy. They are later encouraged to understand and apply the policy directives within the knowledge deepening level 
and then critique national educational reform policies and suggest enhancement in the knowledge creation level as well. The second important aspect is curriculum and assessment. This aspect explores how ICT might support the specific objective as identified the curriculum and play the role in sporting assessment. This aspect initially demonstrate how ICT might offer the benefit of teaching and curriculum in conducting assessment and knowledge acquisition level. Then it encourages the application of these tools in knowledge deepening level and ultimately the knowledge creation level calls on the teachers to interpret and reinterpret the curriculum to function effectively within the knowledge society and devise the authentic assessment strategy to monitor the development. The third important aspect is pedagogy. This aspect encourages the teachers to acquire ICT skill to support effective teaching and learning methods. In the knowledge acquisition level, the ICT integrated into the individual teacher's method. While in the knowledge acquisition level, the teaching methods are often dictated in character, subsequent levels encourages the teachers to take up alternative student-centric pedagogy, ideally the project and problem-based methodologies that incorporate collaborative and cooperative learning. The fourth important aspect is the application of digital skill. This aspect is sizable in the knowledge acquisition level because the ICT skills are prerequisite for integrating technology into the teacher's duties. The digital tools identified in the level are in common sense place and popular such as word processors, presentation packages, email clients and social networking applications. However, the other level tend to be less specific about which the tool teachers deploy and allowing the learning community to determine tool appropriate to the task at hand. In these subsequent levels, the function of digital tools rather than the tools themselves might be identified to reinforce the enhanced learning process. The fifth aspect is the organization and administration. This aspect suggests the ways to manage the school and college digital asset as well as safeguard the people who use them. In a knowledge acquisition level, the emphasis is on going organization, the physical environment such as computer laboratories and classroom to support effective use of ICT for learning. In the subsequent levels, the emphasis moves to creating an environment to facilitate collaborative learning, turning the schools or colleges into learning organization, sporting the learning outside the classroom and even building a virtual learning environments that sports the flipped classroom and preserve the education learning process. This aspect also encompasses how the teachers can support the development of ICT plan to actualize the school or college technology strategy. The last and sixth aspect is the teacher's professional learning. The final aspect is designed to suggest the ways ICT can empower the teachers to embark upon the lifelong professional development. Initially, the, it looks at how the teacher can develop their digital literacy and use the ICT for their professional improvement. Subsequently, the emphasis is on how teacher can engage with the educator network and access resources. The final level, the emphasis shift to how the teachers as a master student and knowledge producer can innovate the model best practice even acting as a coach and a mentor to their students in college and their colleagues. There are several benefits of ICT framework. It is emerging a broad consensus worldwide about the benefit of ICT framework that can be brought to the school or college education through the appropriate use of evolving information communication technology. The range of possible benefits covers practically 
all areas of activities in which knowledge and communication play a critical role from improved teaching and learning process to a better student outcome from increased student engagement to a seamless communication with the parents from the school networking and training to the more efficient management and monitoring within the school or all it is not surprising since the windows of opportunity that ICT offers for the development of knowledge economy and societies are open for education. A number of issues may hinder the school or colleges and teachers in their efforts to fully benefit from these windows of opportunity. They may not be able to afford the equipment. They may lack the access of internet facility or the suitable ICT material might not be made available in their own languages. However, a fundamental issue whether the teachers know how to use ICT effectively in their teaching learning processes. The UNESCO ICT framework implementation is essential to learn. The willing countries to use the UNESCO ICT framework may wish to start by conducting a baseline study of the current ICT competency levels of teachers, for example, through an examination or a questionnaire based on the example of syllabi and exam specification. Such a study would help to indicate which of the three ICT approaches would be most suitable and relevant and would identify the priorities of the providers of the teacher education and professional learning processes. The ICT framework is meant to be used in modular fashion. The teacher education institution and provider of professional learning do not need to address all modules and competency in a particular course or learning environment. Rather, they can design the offering that address only certain modules but are nevertheless consistent with the overall goal and rationale of the ICT framework. This means that the courses and professional learning activities should not consist of smaller number of disconnected competencies. There should be a clear rationale of modules selected. The selection might be based on the rationale of breadth in which all the modules for one approach are addressed. A rational approach to depth could select the same module, for example, the pedagogy in each of the three approaches. A role rational could select those modules which are particularly relevant role such as technology coordinators, curriculum coordinators or other type of rational that on the pattern which a learning is possible. Let us sum up. One of the key lessons that can be drawn from this module is a knowledgeable society is perhaps nowadays interested in many facets of ICT framework that need to align with the educational policies of respective countries and societies. In this connection, the policy makers need to tackle many issues such as teacher competencies, learning materials, ICT equipments, students and teachers motivation, as well as the linkages to other areas of national education and socio-economic development policy of respective societies. Adopting a cross-sectoral approach through an ICT in education system master plan may certainly help the participating countries to successfully address all relevant dimensions which have become necessities of teachers and students in 21st century teaching learning processes. In this contest, the UNESCO ICT competency framework for the teachers is aimed at helping countries and society to develop their own national ICT competency policies and standard operating procedure which should be seen as an important component of overall ICT usage in education, teaching, learning processes. Thank you. Happy learning.